Most people only do oil changes and basic maintenance, but that's not really enough. If that's all you do, you might end up being stranded or even worse with very costly repairs up into the thousands of dollars. Here's everything you need to know, in my opinion, at least what's worked for me, to get your car to run 200,000 plus miles with relatively little trouble. Oh, and a little bonus tip at the end that will help you catch catastrophic failures before they happen. Now, first up, we have obviously oil changes, but don't skip this part because I do see people doing this, I think, incorrectly a lot of the time. And what's worked for me is my first oil change in a brand new car is at 1,000 miles or roughly in that range to try to get the metal and contaminants out of the oil, that initial oil. So for new cars, I keep it simple, 1,000 miles, and then every 5,000 miles after that, I will never go 10,000 miles between oil change intervals, especially not with the newer turbocharged engines. If you bought a new car and you have a turbocharged or supercharged engine, do not go 10,000 miles. This is all due to CAFE ratings in the EPA. You can go between 3,000 and 5,000 miles. That's what I've typically done and I've never had an engine issue. Another thing I like to do, if you do your own oil changes, just take a peek at your oil filter when it comes out, look through the pleats, see if there's any metal in them. You can a lot of the time you can tell if there's something going wrong with your engine just by examining the oil filter. Another thing I do is just look at the oil in the oil pan. I have a clean oil pan. I wanna look in here with a light LED light and just take a peek. Do you see any metal? That could be the sign of a problem. Another super simple thing that I don't see a lot of people doing is just measure the oil that comes out of your car. For an example, this car is brand new. It's supposed to have exactly six quarts of oil. So when I drain this oil, pulled it out, measured it, I had almost exactly six quarts, and you can get a really good idea of how much oil burn you have in your oil change interval. And oil burn does help point to other issues. You might see, you know, maybe you've got some rings that are stuck on an older car or something that you could maybe add some sea foam, help free those rings up a little bit and save you some oil burn. You might also point out that you have an issue with lifters or some other issue that's going on that's eating oil or a PCV valve. We'll get to that in a minute. Next up is your air filter. You wanna replace this probably every 10 to 15,000 miles just to be safe. Also your cabin filter at the same time. Next up is going to be a coolant flush like you see here. This should happen every 50 to 100,000 miles, if not sooner. The coolant seems to be something that people overlook way too often. Here's the car care nut, and he is actually showing a Toyota 5.7, which is a very reliable engine, but shows what happens when you just go too long on your coolant, and it eats this metal gasket and ends up causing a head gasket repair, which is really expensive on these engines. Uh, so that metal inside there, it needs new, fresh coolant. Just do it. Next up is a transmission drain and fill. I prefer the drain and fill method every 30,000 miles. If you can do it, you'll have about three to four quarts that you get out. There is another method you can do a full filter change and do a full flush, but I prefer every 30,000, just swap the fluid and you should be good to go and have little trouble down the road. Next up is going to be a brake fluid flush. You pull most of the brake fluid out of the master cylinder and then put new fluid in and flush your lines every two to three years here to prevent corrosion. A lot of the time you'll see this fluid will look green and nasty and it will reduce your braking power. Next up is your power steering fluid. Change this every 50 to 100,000 miles. I like using synthetic fluid when I replace it. Just seems a little bit better, lasts a little bit longer. Next up is your differential your rear differential, your transfer case, could be your front transfer case. Uh, if you've got a four wheel drive, you'll have a center transfer case. So a front wheel drive car is going to have a front transaxle, which is sometimes just combined with the front differential. And then if you have a four wheel drive, you've got that center transfer case and a front diff and a rear differential. And if you have an all wheel drive car, you will also have that rear differential. So you just need to change those three at maximum and they're not super expensive to change. I would do that every 30 to 50,000 miles. Next up is going to be timing belts. If your car has a belt, every 60 to 100,000 miles depends on the vehicle that you have. Most modern cars are going to have timing chains and the timing chain systems are actually, it's most important to change your oil more frequently, like 5,000 miles or less. That will help your timing chain uh, guides, the tensioners, and everything else. Next up is spark plugs. I recommend every 40,000 miles if you've got a turbocharged engine. Most manufacturers are going to recommend 40,000 for forced induction engines. If you have a naturally aspirated engine, you can probably get away with 100,000 miles if they're iridium or platinum. It really depends on the vehicle, but 
The longer you go, the worse mileage you're going to get, and you can start to have misfires and cause other problems. It's really cheap insurance to just replace the plugs. Next up is going to be the PCV valve replacement. Every 50,000 miles, it will reduce your oil consumption and something that is just super cheap to do. Most cars, these are a very inexpensive item, maybe up to 50 bucks or so. So it's definitely worth doing and really easy to access. Next up is going to be the fuel filter replacement. A lot of people don't do this either. Uh, you can try to run sea foam or other cleaning agents in your gas tank, and maybe you don't have to do fill, fuel filter as often, but every 30 to 60,000 miles, uh, they are not lifetime like people think, but it, you know, it's one of the more overlooked items in a vehicle. Next up is EGR and intake cleaning. Every 100,000 miles, this does help prevent carbon buildup, especially with a lot of these newer direct injection only engines. You may wanna also look into walnut blasting your valves if you have direct injection only. Some more helpful tips. I would warm your car up when you get into it, at least 30 seconds before you put it in gear. I remember my old auto mechanics teacher getting so frustrated, he, he would tell us, Man, don't just start that car and pop it in gear. Give it a little time to build up that oil pressure. Even modern engines, it takes a little bit to get that oil pressure up through the whole system, through all the little passages in the engine. Just, just give it a little bit of time to get going before you stick it in gear. You can use fuel additives with injector cleaner occasionally as well. And the final tip I have for everybody, especially you guys with like GM V8s or, or oil eating engines, set a reminder on your phone every 30 days to check your oil. It's the most simple and kind of, it sounds stupid, right? It, it sounds like, why would I do that? I have a modern car. If I have a 2024 car or a 2020, I shouldn't have to check my oil, but that's not the case. Most modern cars are using thinner oils. They're going to burn more oil than a lot of older cars. So just check your oil every 30 days. A lot of the time you can catch things before they turn into a huge problem. Even with say GM's lifter failure issue that they have, if you catch that on day 30 and you've only gone through maybe a quart or a quart and a half of oil, you've still got like six, six and a half quarts in there. Every 30 days on your phone, man, just check your oil. It's so simple. Just get, get into a habit of it. I would use this list to discuss if you're purchasing a used car from someone, ask them about all these items and when these items were done. They're really important for the longevity of an engine, especially if you're buying a high mileage car. I would ask about every single one of these. It's okay if people do their own maintenance, I do it at home. And I would have answers if someone asked me these questions about how often I do maintenance, what fluid types I use, what brands I use. So it's it's a just a really nice way to figure out if someone's taking care of the car or not. The whole reason I made this video was because I was looking at used vehicles and I noticed a trend. It was probably 10 or 15 vehicles in a row. I'm looking at the Carfaxes and I see almost no maintenance on some of these cars up to like 150,000 miles. You might see four or five oil changes and that's it, which is like, come on, you know? The, I mean, people wonder why they have problems with cars. Part of the problem is people just don't understand what they should maintain and how much there is to maintain on a car. I remember a friend that told me, man, my transmission went out. The vehicle's only like six years old, whatever it was. I think it was a Yukon and it had like 130,000 miles on it. Now, granted, it shouldn't fail at 130,000, but I asked him, I said, have you ever changed the transmission fluid? And he just gave me this blank stare like, like what? Like I didn't know there was fluid to change in there. Now, most people aren't like that. It just kind of shows that people just go about their day, right? They they have other things to be worried about and they're not necessarily gonna worry about the car and, and all this maintenance that you don't think about when you're driving it. Everything works and then all of a sudden, oh, it's not shifting right or it's vibrating when it shifts and you think, oh man, when was the last time I changed my transmission fluid? I've got 100,000 miles on this thing. So hopefully this helps someone out, helps you keep your vehicle for a long time. I've got 234,000 miles on one of my vehicles, so I'm pretty excited. I'm gonna see how high I can get that vehicle. I'm not sure I'm gonna ever sell it, just to, just to try, try to keep it as a, a fun thing on the channel. Let me know in the comments, what who's got me beat? Who's got more than 230,000 miles? Haven't replaced an engine, no, no new transmissions, no diffs, everything's been good. Transfer case, haven't had anything but a starter go bad on that thing, so crossing my fingers. Anyway, thanks for watching. Till next time.